guys are taking a little bit of time. Alright, hello everybody. How are you all doing today? Good. Good. Awesome. Well, my name is Liz. I'm going to be your driver guide. It's going to take us about 15 minutes to get out onto the glacier. Then we'll have 30 minutes out there to enjoy and then we'll make our way back. I'm just going to go over some safety things real quick here. We have two emergency exits in the roof of the bus there. You just turn those red buttons, pop them open. Three on either sides of the windows. Lift those white latches. Push the windows out. Of course, the passenger driver door worked quite well too. Up here we got a first aid kit and a fire extinguisher. There are seat belts on this bus. I highly recommend that you wear them. And of course, we do need those masks for the duration of the ride. But you'll be welcome to take them off on the glacier and breathe in that nice glacial fresh air. So I'm just going to stay quiet here while I reverse and then I'll start the tour for everyone. So enjoy the ride. If you have any questions along the way, feel free to shut them out. Let's go. We'll get going here. So today we're headed out onto the Athabasca Glacier, which is one of the outlet glaciers of the Columbia Icefield. So the Columbia Icefield is our giant frozen lake in the sky, and it feeds a bunch of giant frozen moving rivers. So it sits at about 3,000 meters elevation, about 1,000 meters up from where we are right now. And because it's so high up, it actually has its own microclimate, meaning that any water vapor floating around in the atmosphere up there automatically gets turned into snow and through the process of fernification into glacial ice. So how fernification works is that you need to have at least 10 meters of snow in a winter and then most of that snow needs to stay around for an entire year until the following winter and then you need to have new snowfall on top of that compressed down removing the oxygen and turning it into what we call a fern. So it takes about five years for one snowflake to turn into a piece of glacial ice. So you can imagine how long it would have taken these glaciers to form. They've actually been around for about 14,000 years since the Wisconsin Ice Age when glacial ice covered all of Canada two kilometers high above our heads and only the highest peaks in the Rockies would have been sticking out at the time. So 
as it scraped its way across the valley and carved out our big U-shaped valleys, creating the unique jagged look of our Rocky Mountains today that look very different to many other mountain ranges around the world. So the Columbia Ice Field is the largest ice field in the Canadian Rockies. It sits at about 165 square kilometers, borders both Alberta and BC, and both Banff and Jasper National Park, and it feeds six glaciers, so two in BC and four here in Alberta, three of which you will see on this tour. Athabasca here, of course, and then on your way to the Skywalk, you'll see a frozen waterfall on your left-hand side. That is Dome Glacier. And then on the other side of the Skywalk, you will see Stopfield Glacier. We've got the beautiful Athabasca in front of us now, second largest outlet glacier here. So it sits at about five kilometers long, one kilometer wide, and at that turnaround point where you see the other explorers right now, it's about 250 meters deep, so just shy of the height of the Eiffel Tower and glacial ice underneath us there. And this glacier is constantly moving. The fastest moving part is what we call our ice falls or our ice steps. So, so that's the three steps at the back of the glacier where the snow meets the sky is the start of the Columbia Ice Field and the end of the Athabasca Glacier. So those ice steps move anywhere between 60 to 80 meters a year, about 30 centimeters a day, and our turnaround point between 20 to 30, centi 30 meters a year, sliding down the valley, being pulled down by gravity, crushing all those rocks underneath it. And we are currently on the lateral moraine of Athabasca. So lateral meaning side and moraine is just a fancy French word for a pile of dirt and rock. So this height we're at right now was the minimum height of the Athabasca Glacier about 180 years ago. So since then it's lost about 250 meters in depth. It, it used to sit at about half a kilometer to where you see it today down there. So the lateral moraine is always moving and changing. It moves about a meter to the right and a meter down each year. So every time we come back here in the spring, our road has completely disappeared on us and we have to carve a new path out onto the glacier. This year our marine sits at about a 32% grade. Our ice explorers can do about a 37% grade. So 32% is about 18 degrees. Most paved roads in North America have a maximum grade of about 18%. So we are currently driving on one of the steepest unpaved commercial roads in North America. But our ice explorers were made specifically for this road, for this hill in mind. We are driving in six wheel drive on six Terra tires here. Each one of these tires is filled to about 20 PSI, which is half a car tire. So it can easily maneuver the marine and so that it doesn't chew up that glacial ice when we head out onto it.
So the glacier is actually a little bigger than what first meets the eye because we are currently on the glacier right now. We are on what's called the ice cord moraine. So that glacial ice is about a meter underneath us. And between us and that is all that dirt and debris that came piling down from our left hand side over here on top of the glacier. So this part of the glacier, because it melts so much slower than the rest of it, has actually become stagnant. It does not move it. It's ripped off from the rest of the glacier because of its slow melting process. But it runs all the way up the full left hand side of the glacier and all the way up the full right hand side over there. So the Athabasca Glacier is predicted to be gone in about 60 years, but the Ice Cord Marine is predicted to be gone in about 150 years. So luckily we'll still have it around for a few more generations so that plants and animals living in this valley can still use it as a water source. As we're headed out on the glacier, you can see that gorgeous white blanket of snow right now, which is awesome for the glacier. It really helps it with that albedo effect there. Because later in the season, we have something called cryokinite on the glacier. So the wind picks up dirt, dust, CO2, and ash particles. They land out here. And of course, it affects the glacier the same as you wearing a black shirt on a hot day and definitely regretting it. So we don't want to add to the already building cryokinite that happens out here in the summer months. So up here we have a few little puddles in front of us. In the summer it's a little more of a, of a pond to go take our buses through. And we do this so that we can get all the mud off of our tires, all that dirt, all that debris. That way we don't bring it out onto the surface of the ice and make the glacier melt a lot slower. surface of the glacier. We have that gorgeous blue color coming through. So that happens because of the process of fernification. So snow has about 90% air in it. Ice in our freezer has about 50% air in it. And glacial ice is left with only about 10% oxygen after all of that compression. And so because it's so compressed when the sun's light shines down on it, only the long wavelengths of the rainbow like the reds and the oranges they can make it through the very compressed ice they get absorbed by the glacier but the short wavelengths like the blues and the violets they cannot make it through until they bounce back to the surface and it gives us that gorgeous bright blue color up here to our turnaround point here just a few things I'll go over we have red area boundary signs around the outside of the glacier so we just ask you to stay within those so that we can keep you safe from the hazards out here we also ask that you stay in front of and to the right of our buses we've got massive blind spots on these vehicles we might not see you I don't want to turn anyone into a pancake today and we are gonna have about 30 minutes out here so we're gonna hop back on this bus at 12:45. And it was someone's clever idea to make our buses all look exactly the same. So we are 534 at the Caribou. There'll be a Caribou on the outside of the